This is football's most sparkling setting, Wembley Stadium on final day. And the atmosphere and the excitement here worthy of the FA Cup final itself. Burnley and Wolverhampton Wanderers providing a major attraction. Two clubs crammed with tradition and history, now bringing to Wembley the romance of a story of revival from recent desperate times. Well, that's the context of this final for the Sherpa Van Trophy, the tournament for third and fourth division clubs, which in its four years under this sponsorship has become the fastest growing competition in the football calendar. In difficult times for the game, the Sherpa Van Trophy also shows the happy face of football. It's very much a family day here. And for a flavour of that, joining me at pitch side throughout the afternoon, Jim Rosenthal. Martin, thank you very much indeed, and good afternoon from pitch side here. A bit of wind, as you can see, but the pitch itself is in absolutely superb condition, just freshened up by a drop of rain as well. It's great to see these two old clubs back here at Wembley, and a lot of support too, a crowd around about 80,000. That really is a tremendous achievement. A lot of people travelling down the very congested M1 from Lancashire, supporting Burnley and of course wearing the gold and black the famous colours of Wolves I well remember covering Wolves in my radio days there in the Midlands when they were right up in the first division with a touch of Europe they slipped all the way down of course they're on the way back now back up into the third and Burnley will be hoping for something of a consolation here after just missing out on promotion it's a lovely family day out here some lovely family scenes around the ground all determined to enjoy what should be a tremendous occasion and during the afternoon we'll be doing one or two special things for you talking to the managers on the benches getting their reaction to incidents just as soon as they happen we're really looking forward to it let's rejoin martin now and i know he's got a special guest with him well our special guest brings plenty of football expertise and now these days some television expertise as well andy gray who scored the winning goal for wolves here in the league cup final what eight years ago now Time does go quickly. Actually, it only seems like yesterday, Martin, to be <laughs> honest with you. I bet you wish you were out there today, though. I do, actually. It's absolutely perfect conditions for the game today. A little bit overcast. Pitch is going to be great, I would imagine. It looks wonderful. And, yeah, the feet are a bit itchy. I'd love to be out there, but I'm sure we're going to get a great game. Have you seen Wolves, your old club, much this season? I have, actually, Martin. I, I was, I've been fortunate enough to see them about half a dozen times and also actually play against them on two occasions earlier on in the season. So I've got quite first-hand uh, views about how they play well you're a bit of an old timer here if i may dare say that but there are one or two others from your generation and even further back who've been on view in a warm-up game and uh, down on the pitch jim rosenthal is now talking to them with sweat still on their brows Seriously, a great favourite still you with all the Burnley fans. What are your feelings about this game? Well, uh, I think it should be a fabulous game. I know Wolves has won the league and not on top of the world at the moment. But Burnley's had a good season as well. And underdogs has won every time at Wembley this year, so I'm hoping they turn the keep going. What does it mean for a club like Burnley with great old traditions to get back and get a little touch of the big time again? Oh, it means everything. It just shows you with a crowd. Nearly 80, 90,000 crowd. The two four division sides, it's just unbelievable. Absolutely right. Let's uh, move down the line to another old favourite wearing... A Burnley shirt, Paul Fletcher. Not about old favourite. Still a bit of a life in the legs yet, eh? Well, I can still do a bit, Jim. Obviously, my dad, Peter Noble, played pretty well. Last time he was here, he had a quit. So it's a long while ago. He's still got Tommy Doherty written on the side of his boots. But uh, yeah, we enjoy coming here. We hope it's a good start for uh, the main game. Can, yeah. can you give a little hint as well of uh, having played out on Wembley, what it means for these present Burnley lads to get back here and perhaps get rid of a few old ghosts and things like that? Yeah, well, the club got a bit of a lift at the end of last season when we nearly slipped out of the game altogether. And uh, the crowd have come back in enormous force. And for the lads to be here at the end of such a season, it's going to be phenomenal. It's a very even game. There's no favourite here today. And it's a terrific family occasion here by the look of it. Indeed it is, yeah. It's absolutely wonderful for both sets of supporters. It's a, have there been a credit so far, the supporters, to both sides? It's been a great, great atmosphere. Stevie Kinden, uh, a foot in both camps, as it were. What are your feelings today? Well, I'm just thrilled for both clubs, Jim. As you say, the uh, clubs that are now hitting a bit of bad times, Wolves are bouncing back. But clubs with both with a great tradition in the in the game. Uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers, great memories for me. Burnley, that's where I started my career. As you say, very fair. One foot in each camp. You're wearing the Wolves shirt here because I think that was the only one that you could uh, squeeze into, Stevie. But where really do your feelings lie today? Well, to be honest, and uh, 
I, I don't want to disappoint my Midland people here now, though. But I, I hope Burnley win today because Wolves have won their pot. Wolves are going to play third division football next season. Burnley, as Paul said there, just kept out of relegation from the fourth last season. And to take a pot home this season would be tremendous for them. Just a final word from you. There are a lot of people around here with uh, horns on top of their heads because of the fellow bull for Wolves. What are your feelings about him as a striker? Well, he's a big, strong lad, uh, Tipton lad, local lad. He'll run out here today with so much stride, energy and zest. And I think the Burnley centre-halves will do very, very well if they can contain him. Good to see you out there on the field. Thanks for talking. Thanks very much, Jim. Well, from the Burnley and Wolves men of the past, let's go to the men very much of the present. They're gathering there in the tunnel. Andy Gray, they must be nerve-tingling moments when you have to wait there as they're being kept now. They are probably the worst moments. They'll be desperate to get out there, Martin. I can see them coming there. They'll be desperate to get out. And for a lot of young lads, this will be the first time they've ever sampled an atmosphere, a capacity crowd like this. It's really going to be nerve-tingling for them. Both founder members of the Football League here at Wembley in the 100th year of the league. It's very appropriate. And here they come. That's the smartest I've seen him look for a long time now. <laughs> and the young man there in the Wolves kit on the right of the picture is Andrew Turner, the eight year old son of the Wolves manager Graham. They're coming out at the tunnel end where all the Wolves support is. They're talking of some 40,000 Wolves fans. Well, I wonder where some of them have been over the past couple of years. But they've come out now, and Andrew Turner is taking his bow. I think waving to the rest of the Turner family, perhaps, if he can see them there. One of four Turner children. And a big fan of Andy Gray, I understand. I, I believe so, man. But isn't it wonderful to see two kids like that? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be great for the FA Cup final, the League Cup final, maybe to think, let's do that, because don't they look proud? It is the only major Wembley final, I believe, where team mascots are allowed. And it adds to the day. And they may be nervous, but possibly a little less nervous than some of the uh, older men behind them. on the staging of this final for the Sherpa Van Trophy, as you'll see in the forthcoming presentations. So Graham Turner lines up with his son by his team, Wolves, the champions of the fourth division. Roger Milford, the referee. Smile like that too in the thick of the battle as well. And Burnley just jigging up and down there, trying to get the nerves settled. Looking for their families in the crowd as well. A very proud man. You can enjoy the day up to this point, and then suddenly you realise there's a match to be won as well. Well, the presentations here have a special flavour. Jimmy McElroy, a Burnley star, 55 caps for Northern Ireland, more than 400 league games for Burnley around the time that Brian Miller was a player as well. you wonder why in the past maybe the 1966 England World Cup winning side have never come out and been introduced to an England team here it's uh, a game with heart, a game with soul and this sort of bringing together hands really across the generations is very very warming to see and behind Jimmy McElroy in the light grey suit the man in the dark suit there shaking hands with Brian Miller is Bill Slater a former footballer of the year and a former Wolves stalwart in the 50s as well. Ali Robertson, three times a 
losing semi-finalists in major competitions with West Bromwich Albion. He wondered if he'd ever get to Wembley for a final, and here he is. Mark Kendall, the goalkeeper. Nigel Vaughan, one of the substitutes, with Jackie Gallagher, the other. Bill Slater. In his 60s now. Steve Bull. Andy Gray, you've actually marked Steve Bull this season. He's been a phenomenon, hasn't he? Now tell us about his style. He's very direct, Pat. I say that much for him. The man is hungry for goals. People say his first touch isn't good enough higher up in the league, but all I can say in that is his first touch may, be that, may, may not be that good, but his second touch usually ends up in the back of the net. He's a real handful for centre-halves, and I played against him at the beginning of the year. I had to follow him everywhere, and he ran me ragged. I must admit, these old legs of mine were very, very tired at the end of the game. And... Hey, to be fair though, I did stop him scoring. We got beat 3-1, mind you, but I did stop him scoring, but he'll be a right handful. He's a very determined young man as well. 52 goals for Steve Bull. And the record books tell me that if he gets three in this game, and what a tall order that is, it would be a post-war record, beating Terry Bly's 54 for Peterborough 27 years ago. He'll be looking for the three as well, Mark. You take it from me, he will definitely be looking for them. Well, I was looking through the Wolves' programmes in preparing for this commentary, and I noticed that he got five goals in a reserve game that he had to play. Let's bring you right up to date with the team information. Burnley have a former Wolves apprentice, Chris Pearce, in goal. At right back, Peter Daniel, who spent six seasons with Wolves. He played in that 1980 League Cup final and also in the 85 Milk Cup final when he was with Sunderland. At number three, Ray Deakin, the Burnley captain. Then Ian Britton, the former Chelsea midfield man. Steve Davis, Burnley's player of the year. Alongside Davis in the centre of defence, Steve Gardner, only 19, the youngest player in the match. Number seven, Andy Farrell, his first season signed from Colchester. Then George Ogani, the top scorer with 19 goals. Steve Taylor, the other main striker, who's played for 10 league clubs. 32 years old now, with more than 150 league goals to his name. Paul Comstiv at number 10. Sean McGrory wears the number 11. He'll play on the left of midfield. And the two substitutes, Ashley Hoskin and Leighton James, a familiar name there, now the Burnley youth coach. Well, basically, it's a 4-4-2 formation for Burnley, but their style is to play through their midfield a little bit more than Wolves, who do try to get the ball forward quickly. As for Wolves... Mark Kendall in goal, who learned his trade with Spurs. Right back, Gary Bellamy. The versatile Andy Thompson at left back. Floyd Street, one of the central defenders. Alongside the captain, Ali Robertson. Now a real pillar for Wolves after those 18 years with West Bromwich Albion. Phil Robinson is in the midfield engine room. Robbie Dennison, now a Northern Ireland international. Keith Downing is the only one of the starting lineup who didn't play here in the league centenary celebrations last month. Downing comes in for the cup tied Phil Chard. Then there's Steve Bull with this amazing output, 52 goals and 12 of them in the Sherpa Van competition. Andy Much, who plays alongside him, must take plenty of credit too for Bull's success. He's chipped in with 22 goals of his own. Mickey Holmes, a former Burnley trialist, also there. He'll play on the left-hand side of midfield. The Welsh international Nigel Vaughan and the reserve striker Jackie Gallagher are the substitutes. Well, this is the system that brought Wolves the 4th Division Championship. They'll play 4-4-2 as well, but they will try and get the ball very quickly up to Bull and to Much. Roger Milford is one of the personality referees, Andy. He actually said to me when I was talking to him before the game, he 
he's got a record he's never booked you I don't think he has no <laughs> Roger Roger's one of the better referees in this country for <laughs> obvious reasons yeah he is it's, it's tremendous to see him out handling the only thing is I'm, su I'm surprised he isn't wearing these sweatbands I mean Roger's one of these that he likes to be in those getting involved I see he's managed his sweatbands for some strange reason but... he's a real football fan too he's been here twice to see Bristol City play in the previous Sherpa Band trophies and he has refereed a junior international but this is the first senior game that he's been in charge of in this most marvellous setting. Andy, I'll put you on the spot. Who's going to win? <laughs> that is on the spot. I've got a punt for Wolves. I think they're very, very tightly matched, Matt, but I think their firepower, with, with Bill and Much having 70-odd goals between them this year, gives them the slight edge, and makes them slight favourites. But as this season has shown us already, what does that mean at when they're doing slight favourites? I suppose the favourites have got to win once along the way. But Burnley will be hoping to continue to fly the flag for the underdog. Plenty of support for Burnley, but looking around the stadium, and the good thing about this game, perhaps unlike the FA Cup final, is that they are real fans here. And I think Wolves have got more. Slate them up, slate them. <laughs> So away we go, with Burnley defending the goal to the left in the first half and the sense of tradition kept really by the team colours for the two sides. The claret and blue of Burnley, the old gold and black of Wolves. And I'm sure after a wait of some three weeks since the end of the regular season, they're very glad now to get the game underway. Been a lot of talking and a lot of extra training too. But both clubs were able to fit in breaks to Spain to get a bit of sun on their backs. A little Andy Thompson got a good touch there to set Wolves on their way on a counter attack here. Dennison starting on the left. And in fact, the uh, Referee in all the hullabaloo couldn't make the whistle heard. The ball had gone out way on the far side, and that's an indication of the atmosphere. Paul Comstiff, a tall, naturally left sided midfield player wearing number 10 for Blackburn. For Burnley, ex backburn player. And indeed, in his early days, Paul Comstiff was very highly rated. I know a number of first division scouts who felt that he had talents that could grace a higher level. One scout actually described him as a million dollar man to me once. It hasn't quite panned out the way Paul Comstiff would like in his career, but this is the sort of surface, the immaculate Wembley setting that might well suit his range of passing. Farrell beaten to it. Burnley popped in to have a look at the stadium on Friday, but weren't allowed to train here. Moves, of course, all but downing, as I was saying at the outset. Good play here. Centenary tournament over the weekend in April. And the first real strike goal coming off the three cutting head of Farrell. Well, a year ago, Brian Miller was at the head of a club that looked as though they were going to drop out of the Football League. What a turnaround during the game. But there is real democracy in football and if you put the effort in as Burnley have certainly done since that escape you can come up with some reward as for Wolves close to bankruptcy Chris Pearce a Welshman as indeed is Mark Kendall at the other end Dennison has scored a wonderful goal here against Neville Southall 
in that centenary celebration. And Wolves only lost to Everton on penalties. And a short version of the game, of course. But they gave a very good account of themselves. Great play by Comstock. Here's Farrell. The run outside in from Peter Daniel. Ogani. There's another good friendly experience. Played here in what was then the Freight Rover Trophy for Bolton. It was a loser then. Davis. And the linesman flagging for offside. In fact, Edwin Wilford saw it but realised that there was no need to stop the game. These two clubs contested the charity shield. Wolves were cup winners, Burnley were champions. And Brian Miller, the present Burnley manager, played in that game and scored one of the Burnley goals. Just before the charity shield became a Wembley occasion. Andy Gray, your early thoughts. I think Burnley are definitely slightly better now for me. They look as if they've got hold of the ball earlier and they've knocked it down. Almost every one of them's had a good touch on it and they've settled down well. Wills, uh, they had more direct style, as you said earlier, and it hasn't come through yet. And they'll be hoping to get Dylan much involved pretty quickly. Here's much. Ray Deakin, there's another little story in his career. Savage knee injury when he was with Everton. It looked as though he was finished. But he was determined to prove the medics wrong. And here he is playing at Wembley. The back header from March and Ball felt he was impeded off the ball. But that's the pairing, the understanding for the serve. Wolves so well. Bull, the man from the black country, much as a scouser. They're both hungry for success. And Wolves have been the beneficiary of their appetite. Downing. ratio Andy Gray nodding his head <laughs> in appreciation of that one that's impressive and Roger Milford having to step in then and there's a little flare up off the ball between Constiff and Bull Ogani from Thompson and gets the reward in terms of possession from his endeavour. Help is there from Farrell. And Britain's made a little run inside them. Daniel, who once crossed the ball in that sort of position that led to Andy Gray winning the League Cup for Wolves. Floyd Street with Taylor. And it's a corner. Farrell's gone towards the near post. The corner worked short by Burnley. Davis well in there, and I think it was headed on to his head. And flew straight from Steve Davis to Kendall. It wasn't a difficult save, but it was a worrying moment for Wolves.
Robinson, former Aston Villa junior, spotted there by Graham Turner in his spell in charge at Villa Park. Thompson, who was with West Bromwich Albion along with Bull. Dennison gets it in. A chance to get rid of the balloons that are on the pitch. Oh, what are your memories of playing with Peter Daniel, Andy? Yes, as you say, it was, Peter was always very competitive. Uh, very good right back. Don't think he ever fulfilled what he should have done, Martin. But in looking around, he's probably the only one that's played in this type of atmosphere. So he'll be feeling quite calm, I think, looking forward to it. in making this weekend an occasion for the officials, the players and the supporters. There's a real big time feel about it going around the two camps. Everyone kitted out in their new club suits. And Graham Turner reflecting on the opening ten minutes. In which we haven't yet seen the best of his team. Wolves now. Britain. Tidily played. The longer ball this time from Farrell. Taylor trying to look for support and Comstiff was late arriving. Robinson got there first. And the likes of Comstiff and Britain will shorten Burnley's game bury the play a little bit more than perhaps we'll see from Wolves but they've got the power men up front they've got the proven goal scorers and that's why they're favourites particularly when you ally to that the fact that Wolves have beaten Burnley twice in the league this season 3-0 both times I think the Burnley lads have forgotten all about that man I can assure you I think they've been using it in their favour Andy with this underdog thing Sure they have, Proud yeah. to be the underdogs. <laughs> I think the last time Wolves won here in 80, when I was here, Matt, we were the underdogs very much so, and, and we succeeded in overcoming that story. So at Wembley, it don't really matter, I don't think. Well, Wembley uh, knows what it's like to lose here as a player. 3-1 to Tottenham in 1962. When a certain Jimmy Greaves popped in an early goal. Thompson here is a pretty versatile player. He can play in midfield as well. He's a right sided left back of, uh, I suppose, about the same size as Kenny Sanson. He does that sort of job. Wolves in front of Mark Kendall will be well served. It's a free kick to Wolves, conceded by Gardner. push on Andy Much. So four in the wall for Pierce, the Burnley goalkeeper. Might be a blast from Dennison, who scored in this very goal against Everton. But it's Bellamy, and it was deflected against the bar. Burnley still struggling to clear, and finally, Ogani almost bicycle kicked it away. The ground still buzzing. Not the closest we've had so far. Pierce, who had luck on his side in the end, and certainly didn't have too much luck with the deflection, which sent him the wrong way. But he'll grasp the ball with relief now, Andy. Yeah, I think we'll find the keeper actually made a magnificent save there, Martin. It was a great struck free kick. Deflected, I think we'll see here. And I think we'll find the keeper makes a brilliant save. Yeah, took a nick off the wall. He's going the wrong way. 
Yes, a touch. Well spotted. And well done, Chris Pearce. That will give him some confidence to show you. And Gary Bellamy, who really let rip at the free kick. Britain, who scored the goal that kept Burnley in the league last season against Leighton Orient. And there was so much nail-biting up at Turf Moor. Denison. Fresh from the World Cup qualifier with Northern Ireland last weekend. And that, I'm sure, adds confidence to a player who's operated in the fourth division this season to know that he's good enough to play at that level. Bellamy being urged on by his supporters to get the back pass away ahead of uh, Sean McGrory. <laughs> and he saw the funny side of it. Ball again from much the two in tandem. And that was Steve Full in a nutshell in every respect, except that it didn't end up in the back of the net. As a defender, you can't blink when these two are around. Well, tremendous up. Full started it, and Ian. Very nearly finished it off. He's probably not had a kick up till now, and uh, look at that. It just shows you, Martin. You can't, as you say, you can't take your eye off him for a second. The lad's got an eye for a goal. Taylor. At the Wolves training ground, they very carefully marked out an area of. Wembley-like lush quality but I understand the players refused to break with tradition and trained on the car park and you might know about that that area at Molyneux and there could have been risk of injury there but they just didn't want to take the risk of uh, as Pierce gets the ball uh, away from Bull yeah, I think Molyneux's big enough at the moment to put two Wembley's in they'd have been a bit tired training there <laughs> they'll notice that today though Mark the size of the pitch the space that they've got again towards the two front men for Wolves and much the time to get a second touch to get his pass away Matty Holmes on the right of the four in midfield for Wolves Wonderson and Downing the two centre men Britain one or two tackles going in here and it's a, a difficult line for the referee to draw obviously he understands the need to compete but Ray Deakin was caught by a late tackle I think Overkeen might be the one there yes. I think certainly at this stage one would give the players the benefit of any doubt yeah they're certainly all fired up at the moment Deakin quickly uh, able to get on with things Street. And Taylor's offside. He's a different sort of striker to Much and Bull. Taylor operates with perhaps a little bit more stealth. He'll push right up on the back man, try and steal a yard, maybe catch the linesman as well. And it's been a technique that's brought in rich pickings down the years, mostly in the lower divisions. But at his level, very prolific. Much. Quite prepared to work the full width of the pitch. Oh my word. <laughs> I'm glad I mentioned Paul Constant at the outset because he has got an arrogant side to his game and he's quite prepared to do something like that, even in a final here. Andy, how about that? That's confidence for you, man, <laughs> isn't it? The confident constant. Much 
Williams offside. I think we'll find that a lot today. Burnley trying to catch the two front lads with it, running just blind there like that. It's something that Burnley I'm sure have practiced because of the pace of, of both will and much. It caused all sorts of problems, that kind of run. I talked to Brian Miller yesterday. I said, what can you do after two 3-0 defeats by the opposition in the league? So it's quite simple. You, you just have to keep a, a watch on Bull and Much. It, it's very easy in theory. It 90 is. minutes is a long time. Okay. Well, it can only get better, I feel, today. Well, I think it's time to tell you a little bit about Paul Comstiff. Those games spread over a number of northwestern clubs. But he did... Uh, play in European competition last season with Wrexham in the Cup Winners' Cup and very much looked the part. from Farrell Garnet came off Robertson and that's corner to Burnley <laughs> Sean McGrory to take the corner Comstiff trying to guide it down, almost got it down there for Farrell. Britain, low centre of gravity, bringing in the ability to turn sharply. Gardner, again Burnley trying to pick their passes, and Wolves trying to hit the areas there, as Holmes did, looking for the run of ball. A well-coached player, Ian Britton. A tidy Scott with good feet. Ogani, but this time... Taylor was a bit flat-footed. Oh, and Floyd Street showing that he can play from the back. And an extra touch, a little show there, will mean so much to these players in unfamiliar surroundings. They'll believe that they have a right to be out there. And from Floyd Street's cleverness at the back, the attack ends with Wolves having a corner. And Street makes his way forward. Daniel guarding the post. And Street gets it on. Oh, and Bellamy hesitated. That's Bull. And it's in. Andy Mutch. Wolves have scored. Not quite the rehearsed set piece. But in the end, from the corner... Burnley couldn't keep it out. Good ball initially at the back header from Street, retrieved by Ball, and the second header by the fingertips of Pierce from Much. It's a good little touch on it with your post by Floyd Street here. Martin gets up very well. And uh, Steve Bull actually, for everybody to let on his first touch, it is excellently here. And it's the old Bull Much partnership giving Mills a lead. He's had to play second fiddle to Steve Ball, really, maybe outside the Wolverhampton area. And it's good for the, the foil, the man who's done a lot of donkey work 
to get his name on the score sheet there. The team captain by Ali Robertson at the lead. And this is a test of Burnley's resolve now. We'll get there first. I think Burnley have to gather themselves now, Matt. They must have feared losing a goal as early on as that, and they've got to just compose themselves now and gather themselves. a goal from a corner, Burnley looking to equalise by the same sort of route. Gardner should get there first. Deacon, intercepted by Street, who played a major part in the goal. Well, let's get a reaction from the Wolves manager. Graham Turner's talking to Jim Rosenthal. Graham, a tremendous start for you. Yes, I think we needed that. Settled us down nicely. Um, we looked at a set pieces on Thursday, and it was perhaps not rehearsed quite like that, but it's, it's come off. Um, we had a good chance from, from the free kick that we, we hit the bar with a bit earlier on. So, you know, I'm, I'm reasonably satisfied with the way it's done so far. Dangerous time for you now, though, straight after you score. Always is. I think everybody's aware that uh, immediately after you score, you're a little bit vulnerable. So, But we've got enough experience at the back to cope with that. to hear the view actually as it happens well for Burnley it's a familiar and probably not forgotten feeling being behind to Wolves to speak seriously to Davis. Oh no, he's given it the other way. Well, I'm sure as a striker, Andy Gray might take a different view of that. Oh yeah, I thought the was wrong. And it was, it was six or one half a dozen there, Mark. We could have gone either way. And that's a mistake by Farrell. Paul, will he get there very nearly? Burnley living dangerously at the moment. Showing some signs of panic when... Messers, Bull and Much are around. Well, they talk about buying Steve Bull, taking him up to a higher level. It might be quite interesting. They say they hunt in pairs to try and get both of them. It's not what the Wolves fans, of course, want to hear. And Bellamy nearly got round the back when a header was missed in the Burnley defending then. Retrieved for Wolves by Downing. Here's Robertson. And Bull's in there again. The Raging Bull, they call him. That's a great name for the headline writer, isn't it?
there behind this physio Jimmy Holland. Deacon. Burnley finally finished 10th in the 4th Division. They really fell away at the last when a place in the playoffs was there for the taking. Britain. Taylor. In from Farrell. Now Daniel. Rules regrouping. Trying to get their marking discipline. Deacon shot. Met by Robertson. A little header from Comstiff. Wide for McGrory, the former Coventry City player. Only a reserve player there, given a free transfer by John Sillett a year ago. Because the Coventry manager felt he wasn't quite quick enough for the first division. the situation in the final of the Sherpa Van Trophy with half an hour gone. Burnley trying to change the picture. Well, that's Phil Robinson. Good thing about it is uh, the treatment was very close at hand. And he was going for the ball with Ray Deakin and uh, actually damaged himself in the tackle. Not seriously, though. Phil Robinson, only 21, just a small fee paid to Aston Villa for his services. Farrell, Taylor. Now Britain had Daniel to his right, but looked left to Deakin. Taylor got up well. Denison. Good tackle by Britain. Now he's been prepared to scurry forward. But he took too long. He allowed Thompson to get back. Good recovery from him. Now well, Roger Milford calling. Davis across for another over-eager challenge on much. And the law really being laid down now. Solidly past Taylor to make the header. 
Well, we've had a word with the winning uh, manager so far, Graham Turner. Let's check with the Burnley camp and their boss, Brian Miller, with Jim Rosenthal. Brian, just over half an hour gone. What are you feeling so far? Um, well, the disappointing thing about it so far, as far as we're concerned, I don't think we're getting enough attempts at goal. Uh, we've got to put a little bit more pressure on their goal to score a goal now. Uh, obviously disappointed to go a goal behind uh, when we did do. But uh, we've got to get back in the game somehow. And as I say, we've got to get more attempts at their goal. A bit disappointed the way you defended at the goal, Brian? Yes, a little bit. But I thought, actually, I thought he did pull the back ball very well. He, uh, he pulled it back, but I thought uh, we were a little bit slack when the ball went across into the goal. Man. I thought someone, one of our defenders should be marking. Still plenty of time to get back into it, though. Plenty of time to get, to get back into it. We've got to get in their penalty anymore. Well, that's the message. And Burnley have not scored against Wolves this season. We've got to do that to avoid losing the Sherpa Van Trophy. There's a problem for Wolves with Mickey Holmes at the moment off the pitch with the physio Paul Darby. And Wolves unabashed going on. Nine minutes remaining in the first half. And, uh, Holmes came on. I'm not sure whether he got the referee's permission to do so. But he's uh, had to go off again. I'm sure he did get the nod. I wouldn't have blamed him if he didn't. <laughs> Britain. Some of the early bubble, Andy, has gone from Burnley's play since they've conceded the goal. Definitely. I think since that free kick at the crossbar, Wolves have taken command. Martin, they look a yard sharper in almost every department. And I agree with Brian Miller over there. The way it's going around, Burnley look as if they've never scored. They've got to get behind the two back, the central defenders of Wolves. They they've played in front of them the whole game so far, and they've lapped it up. Ali Robertson and Floyd Street. Oh, well, that was touch and it's going to be a booking this time for Steve Davis. He's had the warning to be fair. 22 years old, very anxious to please and he's pleased Burnley fans all season, their player of the year. But he's finding Steve Ball in this sort of mood. Very difficult to stop. That was a lovely touch out there. Nothing wrong with his first touch here, wasn't it? <laughs> Like said, a few people booked this year for that. Hauling them down. In fact, I remember doing it myself when I played against them. <laughs> Wolves still down to ten men, remember. That was Gardner having to come across. And the header reached McGrory. fairly and cleanly by Keith Downing. Downing again. That's close. Close enough for Chris Pierce to use the fingertips, the same fingertips that made that marvellous save before Wolves scored. But look at this for positive attitude, Andy, when this they're is down to ten stuff men. From I was just going to say, they're a man short, but they've still got enough about them. And it brings another fine save from the goalkeeper. It's impressive stuff from Wolves at the moment. Man. The favourites, good value for their lead. And Pierce has lost it. Street trying to screen it. Downing having a wave at it. It was never really set. And certainly no foul on the goalkeeper. It's a growing competition, this, and 
over the last four years. Four finals, and it's gone up each time, and it's a huge leap, an estimate there of 90,000. It's certainly going to be up around that, that mark. It's amazing, Mark, and I wonder where else in the world you could get two fourth division teams pulling in 90,000. I can tell you, Andy, nowhere else in the world. Exactly, and they say the game's in a bad state. Robinson. Street, look at this. And still Mickey Holmes is off the pitch. And Wolves are going for the jugular, really. They want to kill off this game as a contest before half-time. But he's put out of position now. Three against three for a moment. And that was an important stop by Robertson. But he's hurt himself in making it. Well, we're seeing Floyd Street at both ends of the pitch. That was uh, an enterprising burst. But once the ball was lost, just for a second, it looked as though Wolves were in trouble. i tell you what, Ali Robertson don't stay down unless he's hurt. He must be hurt, I tell you, Martin. He don't stay down, as I've said, Ali. He's a hard man. It was a tackle, and he had to make, given the circumstances. They were a man light at the back. Yeah, and it's one that he's made, I'm sure, many times. It'll take more than that to get away. Yes, yeah. he got to the ball, and uh, he was caught. Warhorse goes on, and Wolves are back to 11 men. Mickey Holmes is back on the pitch, although not moving too freely. They need some inspiration, Burnley, at the moment, Mark. I'm trying to look around and see who can supply it, and at the moment, there doesn't seem to be anybody. Much and very nearly a killer ball through the middle. Sometimes the label, the direct method, has sort of derogatory overtones to, the, to it. But really, it's a, a way that's very appealing and very effective. And then it gets the crowd going. A lot of goal mouth action. Denison looking to supply much and bull again. But Peter Daniel knew a little bit too much for him that time. Well, what a year it's been for Peter Daniel. A year ago, manager of Lincoln City. And they went out of the league. Desperate time. And uh, he severed his connection with the club. Was given a free transfer. Burnley picked him up. And again, wasn't, it, wasn't it Burnley they played in the last game of the season? Was it? No, Burnley were playing on the same day against Leighton Orient. Leighton Orient. And, uh, with all the, all the, well, there are lots of games involved, of course, with Torquay as well. And they scored a goal right at the last when a dog had run on the pitch. It's amazing what a difference a year makes for extra football. time. And uh, Torquay got a point in the injury time that was added on there. And that goal sent... It wasn't Torquay's no, mess, but was it, by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't blame it if it was. Sight, but it's a, it's a sad sight too. A young man who's obviously been counting the hours down to play at Wembley. And I wonder whether he's going to take part anymore. It's been a quiet first half around the Wolves goal for Mark Kendall. it 
is Andy, that the goalkeeper is the character in the team. It's certainly the case with, with Mark Kendall, who's a very chatty chap, and Chris Pearce is the dressing room wit for Burnley. I think you usually find out in soccer. They say you have to be crazy to play there, Mark. <laughs> And I suppose in a team game, it's the one really individual job that breeds individual people. I can never understand why I wasn't a goalie. <laughs> Have you ever done it when the leaders are risen in the match when the goalkeeper's been carried off? I don't think so. I've always volunteered, but never been taken up on it. <laughs> We're into stoppage time, and there'll be a little bit of that. Street getting there first. Taylor waiting to pounce behind him. Deakin. Thompson with a header. But Britain collects. Burnley needing somebody to really attack the cross ball when they get it in. Or maybe Comstiff to shoot, and he certainly can hit them with both feet. Not quite his stronger side, but he's got that self belief. He's not frightened to have a crack. I think if there's one man in the Burnley side that could possibly turn it for him, it, it, it's Comston, definitely. You, you remarked earlier on what a good player he was. And I think he could be the one that Burnley will look to to try and turn the game round. Well, there's a substitution, and Mickey Holmes has had to concede to the injury, with Nigel Vaughan has come on for Holmes. So Vaughan doesn't get a touch of the ball before the half-time whistle goes. But after a rather tentative start, when Burnley had more of the ball in the opening exchanges, Wolves really have turned on the style. They've hit the bar for Gary Bellamy before the goal from Andy Much. And in all honesty, it could be more than the one goal in it at half-time. Burnley with plenty of talking to do in the dressing room. Brian Miller, who's made the point to us, that should be more attempts on goal, now has the opportunity to make that point to his players. The goal that's really given Wolves the platform here, coming from the corner, delivered by Dennison. Floyd Street, who'd actually started the attack that led to the corner, was up there to flick it on. Retrieved beautifully here by Bull, this time the provider, and Andy Much with enough on the header to beat Chris Pearce. Actually, looking at it again now, Martin, I'm sure that Chris Pearce will be bitterly disappointed. I mean, he's got a whole hand on that. And I honestly would have expected, seen it again, would have expected him to save it. You know, he's, he's, played, he's had two tremendous saves already, and I think he'd be disappointed to let that one go. But nice bit of skill from Steve Bull and a nice header from, from Andy Much, the one who doesn't get all the plaudits. Let's find out what Jim's doing down the tunnel. <laughs> go a Wolves. Wolves who are actually uh, the southern area champions in the great Rover Trophy as it started the season and I think midway through the season the sponsors decided to ally another product range to the competition and it now goes down as the Sherpa Band competition. that just before half-time, Nigel Vaughan came on. Welsh international, ten caps. Now Burnley have got to gamble. And Burnley goes down, but I don't think even he believed that it was a penalty. The last thing Burnley want is to concede another goal early in the second half, and Much and Bull threatening them again. by Bellamy and Steve Taylor. And uh, we always have another problem. And this is the one thing that could spoil their day. Ali Robertson and 
it must be a legacy of that tackle just before half time now this could change things the defender goes off the captain too so they lose a key player and the leader and Jackie Gallagher is a striker so in a matter of minutes either side of half time to turn against Wolves. Three substitutions having to be made. And that was Davis behind the far post. Kendall held it well as Taylor came in. So Davis, who's had all the problems trying to contain Bull and Much, venturing forward then. That was a bit more like it, Andy, from Burnley. Yeah, it's probably the nearest they've come in the first minute of the second half. But it'll be interesting to see how they now cope with the loss of the leadership of Ali Robertson. Street, who is joined in the middle of the defence now by Bellamy, who is a natural centre-back and hasn't just been able to win a regular place there. He's got into the team at right-back, so that's not a problem. And it looks as though Andy Thompson has switched from left-back to right-back. Maybe Downing going into the... Uh, into the back four at left back. It's a flip by Farrell. Burnley might feel that the fates are with them at the moment. Davis. Magani, neat work from him. And Daniel, and now Britain. Farrell. Denison, a man from Northern Ireland. He loves to run with the ball. At times a little unpredictably. Davis above much. Cross and goes ball. The goalkeeper didn't get that. <laughs> Dennison. Taylor. There's a chance then maybe to get McGrory on his way. Morgani, now McGrory. But he sold it short and Thompson got a foot to it. Well, let's bring you right up to date now. From the bench, Jim Rosenthal has with him the injured Ali Robertson. Ali, not a game you would really wish to leave. What's forced you off? Well, I've just twisted my thigh and pulled my groin, I think. And what was it? You, th you thought it had gone at half-time and you give it a few more minutes? Yes, I felt it. I knew I was going to struggle second half, but I thought if I go out and do the first 15 minutes, kill off the first 15 minutes, keep it 1-0, uh, come off. Because it was, it started straight away. And uh, I realised I couldn't do it. What are your feelings about this with the balance of the side, finally? Oh, we're all right. We've got a good spirit within the lads. It's got to make it harder for everybody because it's everybody's changed position. But I'm sure if we keep them doing the right things, we'll do it, no problem. Do you think you'll be picking up the trophy at the end of it? I hope so. I'm sure I'll manage up those stairs. <laughs> I'm sure Ali will. You bet he will. It's not won yet, though, but they are in a promising position. A goal to the good and a free kick here. Remember, it was Bellamy who hit the bar in the first half. Is it going to be another crack from him? <laughs> Obviously quite windy down there, the ball blowing away. And looking at the flags, the wind is behind Bellamy. And suddenly rough on the shirts. Oh yes, Denison. An absolute pilot. The Wembley specialist, we must call him. Wow. Graham Turner might take some credit for that. That was obviously well rehearsed. And brilliantly executed. I think not only you and I were watching Gary Bellamy, I think Burnley were expecting one from him as well. And that's why wow, you'd be proud of that in any country, at any level. Tremendous. 
So Robbie Dennison, who scored here in the league centenary celebrations against Everton with a spectacular shot, matches it at the other end of the ground to give Wolves a two-goal position now. Early in the second half. And that's the measure, really, of the side champions at their own level. But when they just had a bit of an upset, losing two of their starting lineup with injuries, they respond like that. Oh, that was Gardner who was looking for something really beyond his capabilities then. Kind of lifted over ball, and he was lucky to get away with it. And here's the man of the moment, Dennison. I'm not sure whether Billy Bingham is here, but if not, I'm sure the word will soon get to the Northern Ireland team manager that one of his current squad has adorned a Wembley occasion with a smashing goal from a free kick. could say that's a substitution that worked well for Wolves there. <laughs> yes, I suppose it's one for the record books and also it's produced a, a situation here where Wolves have got two and Steve Bull hasn't got either of them. He'll be very pleased to be part of a winning team, but would you be honest with me, Andy, and say that it's never quite the same if you don't get a goal when he plays a striker? Well, I've been fortunate enough to get a couple of goals here at Wembley, and, and it's wonderful. He'll be delighted that his team are one in 2 now, but deep down inside, there's nothing he'll like more than you hit the back of the net. There's nothing like it at Wembley, Martin. He'll want to do it, badly. Well, Brian Miller's team in some distress now. Downing playing at left back in the reshuffled wall side and playing there with a masterly touch. Gallagher operating on the left. Jackie Gallagher, incidentally, was signed to put pressure on Bull and Much because he's got a proven record in the lower divisions. He impressed Wolves when he played against them for Peterborough. And if he's there just to ginger the other two up, you could say, and he's done a pretty good job. Not bad, 75 goals in a season. <laughs> and Jackie they must have been frightened. <laughs> in terms of statistics, Jackie Gallagher has actually been substituted more than 40 times this season, so he deserves a run at Wembley. <laughs> Splinters, I should think his nickname is. I would think so. They're going to have to be careful here, Martin. I mean, the Wolves have definitely got a bit between their teeth now. And the linesman has obviously drawn Roger Milford's attention to an incident that the referee didn't see himself. And he's going to sort it out between Steve Taylor and Floyd Street. read it just quicker than Bull on that occasion. Ogani, clever footwork. Comstiff, who's had some good moments but hasn't really imposed himself totally on the match. Maybe he can do that now with an interesting ball across the face of the Wolves goal. And who was trying to get there was uh, Italy in Britain. So... Burnley still with two substitutes to use. And 
and I just wonder whether they'll be tempted to call upon the Wembley experience of Leighton James. Half a dozen times he's played here for Wales, scored the winning goal against England from the penalty spots some 11 years ago. Andy, if you were Brian Miller, would you uh, call on the Welshman? I think I do more than that. I think it's going to be very short time now before both of them, both of the substitutes are on for Burnley. Brian Miller has got to do something very quickly, and uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if shortly both of them are coming out. Matches offside. by Thompson. were speculating about the Robbie Dennison free kick. The man who can really tell us about it is Graham Turner and he's down there with Jim again. What about that free kick, Graham? Was it worked on in training? We looked awful at them on uh, on Thursday, particularly Robbie Dennison. He couldn't get them right and uh, it's a case of it's all right on the day. It's tremendous, tremendous strike. But we've had one or two problems with injuries and uh, obviously lost Ali Robertson now, so we've had to readjust and that goal was very important to us, just to just to settle it down. I mean, we made, had to make four or five changes positionally, and we needed a little period to, to, to adjust. And that goal has just given us a, a, a little chance of, of getting it right. The Wolves certainly have it right. They have two goals safely banked. And Burnley now really have to show what they're made of. Ogani trying to do just that. McGrory, neat work from Magani, not for the first time in the second half, and Steve Taylor at the far post got up well, put all his energy really into the rising off the ground, and there wasn't too much left to keep the header down. I think it was just over stretching him, it was a good little cross, and, and he's got up very, very well. Uh, maybe he could have done a little bit better, but uh, you know, in that position, you've got to try and hit the target. There's no doubt, even with a two-goal lead, if Burnley could get one, it might jangle the Wolves' nerves. Time is the enemy for Burnley. With half an hour left. And still no sign of Brian Miller looking for his substitutes. Ogani working hard to try and set up something for Burnley. Come stiff. Oof, that was close. In fact, it had the goalkeeper, Mark Kendall, almost changed his mind there. It was one of those looping headers. Suddenly started coming closer and closer to the bar. Yeah, and it, it makes me wonder if Comstead have been a bit, low, bit more determined, a bit more ambitious in the first half, but his team might not have been missed for. Every time he's got the ball, he's been the one player which looked like he might do something and that header is the first time he's actually got in the box Matt. and that header came very very close I've been impressed with Ogani's efforts to try and get into the match in the second half and it was his cross that set up the chance or the half chance as we look at replays <laughs> it's always dangerous to take your eye off the main event with Steve Bull out there
Gallagher. Well found by Bull. And that's a lovely run from Bourne in behind Burnley. Who are waiting to try and get Leighton James on. And it will be almost irrelevant if they concede a third goal here. Sean McGorry is to be replaced. So at 35, Leighton James may well have thought his Wembley days are behind him. He's now Burnley's youth coach, but still part-time player. If ever, if ever Burnley needed 30 minutes of Leighton James magic, it's today, Martin. trying to stay on side but James doesn't need Britain that was almost vintage and it could mean a great deal to the Claret and Blue I wonder if they'll be trying to get the ball to him now good work in the half of the Burnley defence by Davis then but Britain lost out Denison Born. And quickly went Farrell. Comstiff. Well played. Ogani. Taylor. He's more like Burnley now. Steve Taylor against Floyd Street. Comstiff, the only Burnley player in the middle. They were a bit slow getting out of players in in support. If Taylor could have delivered the cross. But they'll be there now for the corner. And they've got the dead ball accuracy of Leighton James in the armory now to take the corner. Davis waiting at the far post. It's off the line by Downing. As Comstiff jumped, it might have even come off a Wolves head. And Burnley coming closer as the minutes tick on. certainly worth another look Andy yeah. you must hate being right about his accuracy there <laughs> yes it was a rules head actually and but another so one was that line, yeah. <laughs> offside is ball so Leighton James look at the games he's played more than 100 goals, and the last of those 54 caps was actually here at Wembley in 1983. An outstanding career. Ball. Oh, look at the room here for Denison. This could settle it. And Robinson. Well, he couldn't deliver, but he had to take the shot quickly. But Burnley, in gambling, in concentrating on their attacking play, were all over the place defensively. Great move. Great move from Wills. The only thing it's called that is his finish. Tremendous. Burnley had the free kick. Daniel waiting for Davis to get forward. Comstiff useful in the air too. There's Davis. Comstiff and causing the confusion. It's Bellamy who ducked to get it away but at the cost of another corner. They have looked more dangerous in the air than the certainly since Ali Robertson's gone off. You know, Wolves seem to have lost a bit in defending three kicks and corners. Just too high for Comstiff, who was looking to flick it on this time. Back from Deakin. Comstiff. And that's a hit Bellamy in the face, I think. James. Ogani. Still George Ogani for Burnley, and that could have gone anywhere. Not a lucky moment for Ogani's teammates, really, who were homing in to try and reach the cross. 
the hardest spell of the match, Andy, for Wolves. Yeah, yeah, they've got to, they've got to survive this. Burnley must get a goal here if they want to get back in the game, I think. Now. It's a nice bit of pressure for them. And what they need now is to hit the back of the net. Up goes Comstock. Street waving Dennison away. He wants to bring it out himself. Britain finding himself in the centre of defence. Tom Stiff was a little bit late on much. That's offside. Nigel Ford. I think as the players get more and more tired, Martin, they're going to see far more open play now. There seems to be a few weary legs on there. And although the players have been training, Andy, there's nothing like competitive match practice, and they're three weeks without it. Exactly, I would hate to be there. Much. He's got the socks down. And maybe that's a sign of the cramp, which is such a problem for players not used to performing on such lush turf as we have here at Wembley. For yeah, a 20 minutes left. <laughs> yes, to be fair, both Turf Moore and Molyneux have good surfaces for these players to operate on week in, week out. Kendall is the last line of defence, and that's some clearance. Vaughan, a man to his left, it's Gallagher. Ball's gone to the near post, and Gallagher's been tripped on the edge. Thirty years old now, Jackie Gallagher, and all the years he's put in in the lower divisions, really getting the joy for that toil, being part of what looks like a winning Wolves performance at Wembley. Robinson, was blocked effectively by Gardner for Burnley. Bellamy. Burnley were beaten here in the 1947 FA Cup final. Their kit man, George Bray, still connected with the club, played in that game. They were beaten here in 62. And Tottenham and Brian Miller played. And they're going to be beaten in 88. Well, not if there's a goal here for Burnley. That could have changed the pattern of things, but it's still not coming, despite the increasing pressure, despite the effort of Ogani. to take the corner this time. He doesn't take it very well in truth. Michael James should have exerted himself, I think, then, to get across and take it himself. Davis. He's downing there. Looks a player, and he was good engine. He's not shown any sign of flagging in a variety of positions that he's had to play. He certainly hasn't. He looks as fit now as he did when he walked out the pitch. But you, you find most of those players are very, very fit. Well, Graham Turner is a manager who set a style here without too much elaboration in midfield. Perhaps he's a bit worried that they're playing some extra passes in there now. Trying to take on Burnley at their own game. Taylor, and they look good when they fly into the top corner, not so good when they retrieve from the sand pits behind the goal. I think if Graham Thun was worried about anything at the moment, Mark, it's the fact that one or two of the Wolves players look like they think they've already won it, and that can be very, very dangerous. found by Robinson. Davis played the ball. And he's left much clutch 
touching the thigh of the calf rather and I wonder whether that's a touch of cramp whether it was something that came from the cramp he was feeling before or whether he was genuinely injured by that tackle and it could have caught him before he got the ball it may just been a twist of the ankle as you landed him on if I may be so bold just to use my experience of course <laughs> Had one or two injuries in your time, Andy. <laughs> Slightly exaggerated. The autograph Andy Gray treatment table is not quite on the market yet. 15 minutes to go. But Wolves, with both substitutes on, have a problem. James. Tussle there between Afghani and Thompson. Ends with a Burnley throw. Well, they're certainly looking for Leighton James whenever they can. Deakin. Britain making a good crossfield run ahead of the ball. Burnley concentrating on keeping possession. Trying to attack in a more controlled way, but Peter Daniel, of all people, making a mistake like that. And that's a trip by ball, is it? Well, if it wasn't, it was handballed by Davis. It was a trip. Taylor. And uh, some frustration showing there. Certainly brought down by Bellamy. Meanwhile, Andy Much comes on. So the Wolves have their full complement back. Kendall. Oof. The goalkeeper had luck on his side. Bowed, but not broken, Mark Kendall. And George Ogani launched himself after the goalkeeper's mistake. Andy? Yeah, it was a half chance, Mark. I think you might have thought the keeper was getting that. To see how good it was. Yeah, he just reacted a bit late. But it's chances like that you have to take, in all honesty, when 2 0 down and running out of time. Just probably got a bit of pace on it with a flick from the goalkeeper's hand. Oh, and uh, so. he was, if it was coming at this normal speed, he would have got to it. Street. Not exactly streets ahead, but certainly ahead. George Agani hasn't let Burnley down in his play outside the box. Now maybe inside the box. And Dennison, the scorer of that marvellous second goal, showing he can tackle as well, but Wolves not really benefiting from it. Taylor, Farrell, waiting wide is Leighton James. Now Burnley really should be flooding players into the middle. And that was a foot or so away. It was obviously an intended cross, but one of those that kept on going. I don't know, I think you're not doing injustice here. I've seen Leighton, <laughs> I've seen Leighton score them from there. I think he might have tried a little shot there. Well, it was a curler, that's for sure. And any sort of deflection of friend or foe then, and it could have gone in. wide Britain is onside and it was Bellamy the stand in centre half in the absence of Ali Robertson now who did the sensible thing no time for frills 
Down goes Britain, looks at Roger Milford, and all he sees is a referee waving play on. And Wolves go on with Gallagher. Four. Burnley have certainly come alive in the second half, but it was almost as if they were in awe of Wolves at crucial stages in the first half. I think if they had this belief match from the beginning, they might have a different scoreline. Brian Miller looks on as a booking is recorded. Keith Downing he gets the yellow card. And the free kick offers Burnley another potential lifeline. Come, Steve! Well, that's something he may well reflect about in the months to come. As he moved in then, it looked odds on that Burnley might pull one back. He'll be bitterly disappointed, Martin. That's the best chance we've seen today. Guilt edge from six yards. Chance. Oh, it's a glorious chance. So Wigan won in 1985, Bristol City in 86. They were losing finalists last year to Mansfield. And it's looking very much as though Wolverhampton Wanderers will have their name on the trophy in 88. who have to live with the history of the club, live with all the comparisons with the Billy Wrights, the Jimmy Mullins, the great days of the 50s. They'll be able to talk about the day in 1988 when they came to Wembley and conquered. The day when the Wolves supporters also showed a terrific style as well as Andy Hutch has given them so much to cheer throughout this season as well as contributing that crucial early goal great little turn there on Nigel Vaughan and a tremendous little cross and he's unlucky just a little bit high so it's looking very good for Wolves both goals from restarts a corner and that's things that pleases managers and coaches. Steve Bull charge and he's played his part so they have to uh, bring out 
Nicky Holmes to get his medal. And he won't want to miss that moment. Straight, he's there again. The pass is shrewd, but he wasn't supported well by much on that occasion. But it didn't cost Wolves because Thompson was there. And really the story of the day, Andy, would you not agree that whenever Wolves have had a problem, they've come up with the answer? Yes, I think they've probably defended better than, than Burnley on the day. Burnley, obviously, I think, started the game, as you said, in awe of Wolves, a little bit worried, and, it, and they suffered for it. And, and they found it very hard to get back from two goals down. It's been an uphill task from there on, Martin. As Wimbledon showed, the first goal so important in a final. And it came for Wolves. It delighted their supporters. They were here in their tens of thousands. And I'm sure that it will encourage all of them to go to Molyneux next season and watch the third division football there. Brian Miller will be turning his thoughts to getting out of the fourth division next season as Wolves have done this. Looks like I'm going to get one right for a change, Martin. And it looks as though the favourites are going to have a Wembley win at last in this topsy-turvy 1987-88 season. of the season because Walsall and Bristol City have got to play again we're almost going on into June the season that started here on August the 1st I thought their game was a warm-up for next season now. <laughs> I don't think they'll need to do too much pre-season training anyway ball oh that one has crowned his incredible season but not this time he stays on 52. 52, you can hardly believe that you're saying it. I bet you'd have given 10 of them away to put this one in, though, Martin. That's probably one of his best chances of the season. Wolves looking for a flying finish. Robinson. And now Paul. And now Dennison. Much room to injury time. Oh, and Davis. That was an important touch to stop a third goal with Robinson right in there behind him. And Andy Much gets the post. Burnley beaten and nearly buried here. What a finish, Martin. Eh? This again is probably an easier chance than he's had all game. But it's only incidental because Andy Lutch and Wolverhampton Wanderers are winners here. There hasn't been much doubt about it really from the moment they scored through much coming up to the midway point of the first half. Comstead. Farrell trying to get in behind Downing. But the stand-in left-back looks to the position ball. Roger Milford has had a look at the watch. And Wolves have won it! Mark Kendall illustrating the joy. Andy Much tired but delighted. Desolation at the other end for Chris Pearce. Robbie Dennison, who triumphed here with a goal against Neville Southall in the centenary celebrations. He'd want to play at Wembley every week with his second goal, as Andy Gray described, fit for any occasion. And Andy, your heart must go out to your old club now. Yeah, it's brilliant to see 
Um, especially pleased with Graham Turner actually, having worked him at Aston Villa and been sacked there and taken over at Wolves and revived the fortune. Delighted for him. I can feel for both sets of players in that. I know what it's like both to win and lose. And Burnley have contributed. And we can show you how it was for Graham Turner as the final whistle went off the bench the culmination of so much hard work a double for Wolves and nothing in the end for Burnley and Brian Miller you saw there went across to straight away congratulate Brian Turner the dances the communication between players and fans and now the applause from Wolves as the losers go up in the game always a great servant to football and he certainly deserves his moment the Sherpa Van Trophy presented to him by Bill Slater the celebrations here are for Wolverhampton Wanderers the club can look you know what he said Alan Olsen from the cheap thing to the first of many <laughs> the second half. So genuinely a 13-man effort. Mickey Holmes, who didn't last a half-time, but they got him up the steps. He's had some agony, but now he's getting the ecstasy of being a winner at Wembley. photographs of it but uh, we've moved on in the technological age I don't remember that <laughs> well the man of the match is down there with Jim Rosenthal Point Street Christmas is man of the match this award for a wonderful bit of work from the boys. It was a bit hard to sort of get back into the swing of things after a swing of week breaks from the end of the week, but the club took us away at Spain and kept us sweet. And for the supporters, it's been marvellous. It's been great. Um, what about 
big, uh, a big season for Jamaica with John Barnes kicking up a couple of boards. Now you're getting this one here. Yeah, well, you know, you can't keep the boys out of it. We've got the black boys are back again. <laughs> a great day for Wolves too. Oh, it's been superb. You know? The place has been dying for something to sort of pick them up again. And I'm quite pleased that we can give them this trophy. Well, listen, you're getting the chrysalis golden record here from Rory O'Connor, managing director of Sherpa Van UK. Very well done indeed. Roy, congratulations. Super game. We've enjoyed it. Hope you have. Yeah, Roy. Keep the, tro keep the trophy in the middle, eh? <laughs> the golden record, a golden performance from Floyd Street. It's a bit too heavy for him to carry round, I think. He's uh, racing to get back in the photographs. There he is now. <laughs> and he wants to touch the trophy, too. He get his picture taken it out a bit, though. <laughs> so, Wolves... satisfaction. Andy, do you ever remember any of this? I mean, it, 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 after all the emotion of it all, can you remember going round after you'd won it? No, I think this is the point of the game, that I, the part of the game that I have never ever been able to remember, is starting at the start and going round and ending up in the dressing room. That is was so emotional that time back to it. When you actually sit down like a week or two weeks later and think, what was it like walking around? You forget it. I remember a lot more walking around when I lost than I ever did walking around having won the game. These lads will definitely remember that part, as I've said. I remember that. It's an awful lot. But they can feel proud. They've achieved something after last year. They've actually got to the end of the year and, and taken part in an absolutely exceptional game. It's a tremendous advert for the lower league football. It is. It's a competition that really didn't get off to the best start. A few teams used to field their reserve players. They didn't believe that uh, they had a place in a congested calendar. But once it became a Wembley occasion, then there was a, a genuine prize at stake and it's grown and it's grown and top this one i mean almost a full house here for two outstanding clubs it's amazing to think that actually more people are here today mark than watched scotland and england only a couple of weeks ago who would have ever have thought that and four times the crowd that watched england against Colombia, with england going off to uh, a major european championship team. Mm -hmm. it shows you the size of this world i mean to be fair done there for a few but rules have got tremendous amount of support down here today. They are a big part. Well, Peter Daniel was a winner with Wolves and Andy Gray in 1980. But he's seen the other side of it today. But a good professional that he is, he's applauding supporters who've done so well for Burnley this year. Let's set the record totally straight at the end and give you the final score. Andy Much in the first half, Robbie Dennison with that delightful free kick at a crucial stage in the second half. And the Sherpa Van final of 1988 finishes Burnley nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers 2. First one of the season, you know, but came at the right time, started the second half, you know. 
everybody around me on the bench said he's going to score here. Did you have that conviction? Well, not really, no. Uh, we've been working on a few free kicks in training, you know, through the week, and uh, I said to myself with Gary Bellamy was going to hit one. He hit the first one the first half, so I thought it was my turn, you know, so it's lucky enough I went in. You're very low-key here. You're hardly sweating. Was it that easy for you? No, no, no. There's a lot of hard work on into it out there, you know. Uh, the lads worked very hard. Burnley, you know, played very well the second half with quite a few chances as well, but I'm very pleased it's all over now. Great day for the club and all the fans as well. Oh, it's tremendous. And you see the support we had here of almost 50,000 here. It's absolutely tremendous, you know. Very well done, indeed. It's a good goal. We enjoyed it all. I'm sure you'll enjoy it on the video, too. Yeah, I'll watch it a few times, I would say. <laughs> I think you will. Nice. Graham Turner, you've had one or two hard times in this game. I would think uh, this must make up for them. It's quite incredible, isn't it, the scenes? Who would have thought the two fourth division clubs could come to Wembley and almost fill it and create an atmosphere like this? I thought Burnley... They gave us one or two scares late on in the game. Perhaps we were a little bit fortunate to get away with one or two incidents. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's all incredible, isn't it? It's like a dream. It's like a dream after all the setbacks we've had. When you look back in your quieter moments and look back over what Wolves have achieved this season, what do you think uh, your impressions will be and your verdict will be? Well, I think we've, we've... We've had a great spirit in the club. I think that's been the key to the whole thing. We've had one or two problems with injuries today, and it, it all shone through, that, that spirit... We've had to change four to five players positionally, and, and it all worked out right. And I think it's been a tremendously satisfying season. You know, I, I've personally had one or two setbacks, and when you, when you see scenes like this and you, you win the championship and come to Wembley and win a cup, marvellous occasion. Just finally, has the level of support here from Wolverhampton surprised even you? Yes, yes, it has. I didn't think we'd get anywhere near this number. And the colour and the noise has made it, you know, a marvellous spectacle. A great day out. Very well done to yourself and to your team. Thanks, Jim. Let's bring in Mark Kendall here as the, as the manager moves away. Mark, another fella who's knocked around a bit in this game of football. This must be one of your, your greatest days. Yeah, it's a long way from Walthamstow Wreck when I played in the charity game with you, Jim, back in 1979. But uh, You remember that one? Yeah, well, I had a nightmare again that day. But, uh, no, it's tremendous. I mean, I've uh, been in the game for 14 years now, and uh, it's only since I came to Wolverhampton that we've had any success with it. Newport battling against the wall every week. But I've uh, came now in 18 months. I mean, the, the club has turned around. As you can see, with the support, it's a big club. All they want is success, and hopefully this season we put ourselves back on the road. You're quite an emotional sort of fellow under it all, aren't you? This must be quite an emotional occasion for you. I think so. I mean, obviously, we had a taste of it when we came to the Mercantile, but uh, we, we knew now that there were two sets of supporters. I mean, our lot really out, outshone the Burnley supporters today. We've done it for them, we've done it for ourselves, and obviously, it's a great double for the club. And one or two celebrations, I would think, lined up. Oh, yes, I think so. I think it'll go well into the morning. Well done, Mark, I'm pleased. Well, cheers. cheers. Well, a really enjoyable afternoon in which Andy Gray has proved to be an expert tipster. Well done, and I guess a great enjoyment for you. Tremendous enjoyment, and it was nice to get one right for a change, Martin, but uh, particularly pleased being an old rules player myself that they've they finally they've lifted the trophy. Great. When we look at the lads in the dressing room now with the Sherpa Van Trophy, a dressing room that you were in as a winner in the League Cup, does that bring back special memories? Can you tell us how they'll be feeling now? I think now they'll, they'll be sitting down now after all their euphoria of being outside and walking around the track. Yeah, they've gone in there, they've sat down, probably got their medals out for the first time and actually had a good look at them and thinking, my God, have we really done it? And suddenly it'll just be starting to come through. They'll be having a few glasses or a few bottles, probably <laughs> of champagne to drink and be thoroughly enjoying it. And a couple came back out again into an empty stadium, <laughs> yeah. Phil Robinson and Andy Much, almost as if they can't believe that they've been part of it. I think that's the beauty of this competition. Uh, we see the two lads come out. Um, I'm sure Andy Much just said to Phil Robinson there, did I really score about an hour ago on this ground? I mean, they're looking around it and probably thinking, was there really 90,000 people here a little while ago? And were we here? And let's hope that they too appreciate it because uh, that's what this trophy has been all about. One thing that you really appreciated, it was the other goal, the Robbie Dennison yeah. free kick. A goal to grace any occasion, you described it as, and uh, let's look at it now. I think that was a fitting description, Martin. We, we criticised, well, I did, the goalkeeper for the first goal, thought he could have done better, but believe me, there was absolutely nothing he could have done about that. And that just about settled it. So the scene was set for Ali Robertson, one of the game's most loyal servants, to drag his injured legs up the Wembley steps to collect the Sherpa Van Trophy for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Well done to them.